Hey guys, it's Sam here at the Eco Lounge. It's a beautiful Wednesday afternoon and the sun is out, which means the insects are going to be coming out soon. So today we wanted to sit down with you guys and go over some tips and tricks to how to spot a hatch and what kind of flies you want to be throwing in this time of year. So one thing that you can do, what I like to do personally, is before you even get to the river, you know, do some research, um, look up a hatch chart and see what kind of aquatic insects are in that river and what the trout are feeding on predominantly. Um, after that, once you get to the river, there's a couple things you can do. I like to just scan the river and see what's happening, if the water's boiling, if any fish are rising. Um, if not, you can just do a couple tests. The first one is a subsurface test, so you can just go and simply pick up a couple rocks, look underneath them, see what kind of uh, nymphs and larvae are living under those. Um, you can also do a terrestrial check where you're looking in the bushes, kind of shaking the leaves out and seeing what kind of um, flies are flying off of those. Um, once you have those specimens in your hand or once you've seen what you're looking for, the biggest thing is matching size and profile to what you see. So profile meaning the shape and color of the fly and size meaning the size of the hook that was used. Um, after you've done that, there's a couple uh, kind of universal flies that you can find in rivers across America. Um, they're sort of the generic trout diet in my opinion and they are really easy to catch fish with as well. And those include midges, mayflies, stoneflies, and caddisflies. Um, and we actually have a couple here to show you and the three stages of their life. So a uh, nymph for a larva, the pupa, and then the mature or a spinner fly. So we can show you those guys here. Up top you've got a midge, caddis, a mayfly, and a stonefly. And from left to right is their stages of life. So up here you can see your basic zebra midge, just a black, I think around a size 20. And to the right of that you see an emerger. Um, and this is in the pupa stage of life where the fly is coming from its midge stage and it's going to the surface of the water and it's, growing, it's shedding its shuck and growing its wings so that it can become a mature spinner and go up into the trees and find a suitable mate. After it does that, it turns into just an adult mature midge, as you can see here with a little hive is tuft on it so that it's easier to see. Um, and then moving down, the caddis midge, or the caddis larva, just looks like a little green worm kind of with short little stubby arms. Um, to the right of that is the same fly in its pupa stage, so when it's shedding its shuck and growing its wings as well. And then to the right of that you can see the mature caddis with those uh, telltale signs with those wings that are just flat on its back and that's just an elk hair caddis. Um, moving on is the mayfly which is similar to the other nymphs. It's just an olive green or brown fly um, and it does the same thing. It moves to a pupa stage and then you see and parachute Adams fly right there, which is just the mature mayfly with those indicative wings that kind of look like sails on a sailboat. They stick straight up when they're sitting on the water. And moving on is your stonefly down here. These are pretty creepy crawly looking. They're found usually under rocks. Um, the only difference with these guys is that they crawl right to the shore from the water and then hatch from there. So they don't have a pupa stage, it's just two stages of life. And this is sort of what a mature stonefly looks like. That looks more like a salmon fly, but it has those wings that kind of form a tent shape on it. Um, yeah, so these are the generic species, sort of universal. You can go out to almost any river and have a look with these. So that's about it, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and tight lines.